Hey everyone, we're at the Gigabyte factory in Taiwan where motherboards and video cards are made. Gigabyte makes about 200,000 motherboards here per month and 200,000 video cards here per month. Total 450,000 units. The other 50K there are from things like systems, laptops, things like that. So Gigabyte has moved a tremendous amount of its operation to Taiwan. And today we're going to be walking through some of the SMT lines. We'll be walking through DIP. Uh, one of the other lines, so that's a, uh, a different floor we'll be looking at. And uh, this will give you a full start to finish look at how motherboards are made. And the same exact process applies to video cards. So we'll be looking at, I think the B360 Aorus Gaming 3 is the motherboard we'll be following through the start to finish today, but it's the same process for everything. So SMT lines are pretty cool. Uh, we'll start with a solder paste machine. It eventually goes through optical inspection. It goes through reflow. It goes through pick and place. And we'll be doing voiceover to explain all of those because there's a lot of information here to get through. So let's start with the factory tour of Gigabyte's motherboard and video card factory, Nanping, Taiwan. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Corsair One i140 Compact Gaming PC. The Corsair One i140 is a small form factor PC outfitted with a 9700K, RTX 2080, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a 480 gigabyte NVMe SSD, all housed within a two millimeter thick aluminum chassis. The Corsair One i140 is a 12 liter system fit for desktop use with the same sized i160 counterpart with higher end parts. Learn more at the link in the description below. Gigabyte's factory is split into a few different areas. There's the BIOS programming station, the semi-automated packaging line, and the SMT lines, where 11 different lines prepare around 400,000 video cards and motherboards every month. This process is identical for the video cards and the motherboards. The only thing that changes is which components are being mounted to which boards, but otherwise for either product, the same steps apply. So let's start our tour with the SMT lines. These surface mount technology lines are arranged in 11 identical rows, stretching halfway across the factory floor and containing mostly identical machines for each row. SMT lines are fed with surface mount components like small capacitors, resistors, MOSFETs, so forth, so that the components can be placed on the board. These are provided in spools and reels by third-party suppliers, allowing the machines to maximize efficiency since spools are replaced by hand, but they can still feed through thousands upon thousands of components before being replaced. Each motherboard made in this line has between 1200 and 2400 surface mount components on it, depending on the board complexity, with something like the Z390 Godlike using more parts than most. Today we're following the B360 Gaming 3, at least for this floor. The first step is for the blank PCB, typically delivered from a PCB supplier in China, to be loaded into trays that the SMT line pulls from. Each board is set onto a conveyor belt via automation, where the blank PCB's first stop is to go through a solder paste machine. The solder paste machine can process about 150 boards per hour, using a screen to apply paste to the correct areas of the board. Later in the process, solder paste will be used to secure components and connect them to the board, but for now, it's just getting applied. And one board takes about 24 seconds to go all the way through this machine. The screen is cleaned every 10 minutes to ensure it doesn't get gunked up. It can be thought of sort of like a silk screen for printing shirts, so that'd be about once every 25 boards for cleaning the screen. After the solder paste machine, an automatic optical inspection machine, or AOI machine, is used to ensure each solder ball has solder paste applied. This is done with either 2D or 3D AOI machines, with the latter being more expensive and more detailed. MSI primarily showed us its 3D AOI machine called the TR7007S2+, Plus, which can check data for every single pad on the motherboard. After the motherboard passes initial AOI, it's fed into the next set of SMT machines for service mount components. These machines are called pick and place machines, named for their obvious task in the service mount line, Pick and place machines go through reels upon reels of components, starting first with these smaller parts and graduating to larger components later down the line. Each section of the pick and place machine takes about 17 to 20 seconds for mid-range motherboards or video cards, but cycle time loss is reduced to about 3% as a result of running two different internal conveyor systems in parallel. Each station in the line is responsible for about 100 components, with 15 stations in the SMT line total. Components are loaded via reel and spat out rapid fire, almost like a Gatling gun, with each reel of components containing about 10,000 pieces. Some of these also include pre-programmed BIOS chips, which happens in another section of the testing floor, and we can show that as well. 
The BIOS programming machine will write BIOS to the chips and prepackage them into a real format, and once the reel is full, a technician wheels it over to the SMT line to be fed into the machine and placed onto the motherboard or the video card. At this point in the process, the components are placed on the board in the solder paste, but they aren't really secure. The last item is to place the socket, which goes onto the BGA for the CPU pin array. The socket is contained in a tray format rather than a real format, as it's the largest component on the board, so it goes last. This order of smallest to largest is partly done so that the machines can work lower down with those Gatling gun outputs sitting closer to the board so that it can work faster and more efficiently, only having to elevate the machinery toward the end of the line. The next machine is the reflow machine, which accepts parts via conveyor belt from the 15 pick and play stations. The reflow machine heats the motherboards or video cards to about 250 to 267 degrees Celsius in an oven, joining the solder paste, the pads, and the components to the PCB. The oven used here is a 1913 Mark III and takes about five minutes to heat the solder and secure all the parts to the board. The conveyor belt trudges along, next bringing the mostly completed board down the line to skilled technicians who hand test the products to ensure that they function and have some level of required quality. The motherboards are plugged into semi-custom circuit testers, ensuring that everything is connected and detecting properly, with one technician manually overseeing the automatic optical inspection results to check for false positives. The entire start to finish process is about 30 minutes for this part of manufacturing, but we're still missing the PCIe slots, the batteries, and the heat sinks. We also still need to follow the boards through the testing process. As the boards finish this part of the process, they are lightly packaged to be transferred upstairs to the dip line or dual inline packaging. So now we're up on the next floor of the building and this section is going to be dip and testing as well. So uh, part of this is going to be uh, more pick and place on the machines, more AOI or, opt or optical inspection and then manual placement too. So you'll see, uh, we'll talk through some of how the PCIe slots are actually placed manually and so are the uh, CMOS batteries, for example, the battery container anyway, and some of the other larger components, power pinouts, for example. So about 30% of the process is automated, but then the rest is still done by hand. And after everything goes through pick and place and, and through uh, inspection and through finalization of the board, you end up with a finished product, which we'll talk through that, but that process is about 10 minutes, and then the process on the floor we just saw is maybe about 30 minutes. So it's actually a, a fairly long start to finish process, and actually the board's up here, are from the previous day. So what they do is they go through one board at a time on the whole line, then they bring it up, and they go through one board at a time on the next line, and so it's about a one day latency between the two. And after uh, all of this stuff is testing. So let's, let's talk through the process on this floor as well and get to some of the new research for the uh, automated testing machines, including stuff that I want, like automated placement of memory modules and CPUs. The station we're at now is a demo of an old testing station from Gigabyte. So this is how it used to be done versus how it's done today, which you just saw probably in the previous part of this video. And all of this stuff here is what was manually tested by the people working at the station. So test every single cable, every output. You have all the PS2 cables, audio cables, uh, old, old, old uh, USB cables, stuff like that. So this was done manually. The CPU cooler is installed manually, memory is installed manually. Uh, I mean, it was basically you were building a whole computer just to test it and make sure the motherboard works, which uh, is clearly inefficient. So Gigabyte improved and moved on to the next step, which was a Gigabyte designed function box, they call it. And so what this did was allow the Gigabyte to pre-mount some of the hardware, the fixed hardware like video cards, the cooler to this uh, sort of acrylic glass top piece and then close it down and clamp it onto the motherboard here and so that would allow several of the pieces to remain unchanging and then the user only has to manually change a few pieces like CPU, memory, things like that and then the fixed items up here just close down on top of it and it reduced the workload. Now this is about 10 years ago, uh, the stuff we saw a second before that even longer ago and obviously Gigabyte's improved a lot. The last station here is just for training purposes. So this would train the technicians uh, which cable goes where, which device goes where, and if something was inserted incorrectly, then you'd get an LED light up to say, hey, that's wrong, uh, so that they could correct it. So this is, this is then, and in the, the previous parts of the video, you've seen the upgrades where now Gigabyte is moving towards more test automation, including placement of things like the memory modules. 
The next line starts with more pick and place machines with hoppers used to distribute some smaller components down to machines that place them into the motherboard. An operator can dump small components into the hopper for automatic placement, while the machine uses sort of an ammo belt for more SMD placement across the board. As for the big connectors, those get placed by hand. The assembly line sees skilled workers placing DBI connectors, PCIe slots, CMOS batteries, and power connectors by hand, as these components aren't sized in a way that the machines can really pick them up. Large ventilation systems are used to pull solder fumes away from the operators and safely exhaust them out away from the assembly line, and it keeps the operation moving smoothly throughout the day while ensuring that it's still a safe work environment. Gigabyte sends the boards through another optical inspection line to check if the components are present or not, it's just a one or zero here, with any boards detecting as missing components being sent to manual inspection for human oversight. Sometimes there are false positives and sometimes it just needs to be sent through for a component that got missed. The socket is protected with a cover for these steps, as the pins and the pads are obviously fragile, and now that the socket's on the board, they need to be preserved. Each motherboard has serial numbers, and they can be tracked start to finish, so in the event of an RMA, Gigabyte can actually backtrack to see if something in the assembly process specifically caused the issue, and so if there's some sort of assembly line error or machine error, it can be corrected quickly and uh, tracked easily. Finally, heatsink and wireless modules are placed in manually, and then the board is ready for the next line. This entire process, the one we just showed, takes about 10 minutes. Counting the SMT lines from the day prior, that put the total motherboard build time from start till now at about 40 to 50 minutes, depending on how you count the transit time from floor to floor. Just counting the lines that we've shown thus far, Gigabyte processes about 600 to 800 motherboards per hour, or about 5,000 per eight hour workday, which means that in the time that we were there alone, Gigabyte went through thousands of motherboards or video cards in its factory. Finally, after all of this, the motherboards are sent to the packaging line. The box folding machine was unfortunately not in operation during our visit, but we have footage of it from our 2016 visit that shows the machine working. Once the box for the day is built by the machine, it's sent down the assembly line to staff who individually pack the manuals, CDs, USB keys, warranty cards, and the motherboards or video cards themselves into the box. And that box building machine is pretty cool. It's basically just a giant punch and it's got a templated cardboard box that it can work with, making it fairly easy to assemble. During our visit this year, the line was packing video cards rather than motherboards, and these video cards are getting boxed and shipped out to various regions. We saw some boxes for Holland, some for the US, and so forth. Each video card box exits the line and is manually placed into a larger cardboard box to be palletized and shipped internationally. That box then rolls down the line. It gets automatically taped, and it also has straps applied automatically to ensure security of the box, make sure nothing falls out loose. And finally, it exits the line, and that would be the end of the motherboard or video card manufacturing process. And that's the end of the product line. So uh, some video cards here, they didn't have motherboards today because it changes based on the day, but that covers Gigabyte's factory. So thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us for trips like this or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like the one I'm wearing today. I'll see you all next time.